my name is James Fitson, one of the piano teachers at Pinson Music. Um, today I'm going to be taking you through a piano tutorial uh, with a jazz piece per Dido. It's in the ABRSM grade one jazz book here. And um, it's, it involves an improvisation section, which is interesting because it has these little uh, boxes here. Where, where, where can you see it? Well, there, it sort of gives you guidance of notes to play. Um, but you can, you can be more fancy with what you're doing there. That's just sort of a starting recommendation. Um, so look, I might play this through once and then break it down a bit. syncopations to get around um, so again doing some clapping with swing counting could be helpful to getting this rhythm uh, it's definitely tricky not many notes but like even this first one you might be counting one and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and four. That's syncopation on the and of two. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. It might be the kind of thing you need to actually practice first vocalizing that one and two and three and four and with the swing. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and just with your right hand um, mimicking what the right hand actually is playing, the rhythm is playing on the, in the music here and making it tap on the and of two and just cycle that in a loop in a bar one and two and three what is it? one one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four um, it's uh, quite a tricky thing to do when you get that when you're working with that to get that feel it helps to think of it as well that's the and of two it helps it because it's so close to the third beat it's helpful to think of it as the precursor to three and how it leads to the third beat so one and two and three one and two and three and four and one and two and three it feels like it's pulling you towards that that would be number three to tap it first then learning to play it and of course that that left hand is a similar similar thing this time it starts on the end of four one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and again, learning to come in on the end of four is it's useful to practice and again a sort of a, a loop of four beats and just tapping on the end of four and as you progress, you can end up doing further and doing a whole rhythmic pattern on the left hand. One and two and three. Sorry. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. And just picking. 
looking like a four bar statement so it doesn't get too much to digest in one hit. And then another step after that, of course, to do two hands and one and two and three. so on. Learn to do that over and over again. Then you can do the one hand tap, one hand play routine. I've done in previous videos. And one and two and three and four. 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 And one and two. And swapping around. Challenging when you're starting off. Of course, if you go recordings to this, they recommend a Duke Ellington uh, from Inner Melatone recording. Go and look that up on YouTube, listen to that. It's a lot faster, it's more like. But it, um, it gives you an idea what it actually, actually sounds like if you're struggling to, to work through it from a reading perspective. Um, what else do we have here? So the solo is kind of short and sweet. Uh, eight bar, it's only like seven bars in the exam, which would feel like eight bars with that little at the end. Soloing on basically D minor seven and C. There's just a couple of notes for the D minor seven recommended, just the D, F and G. So yeah. Like what we looked at pre in previous videos, it's good to like stick a metronome on or some sort of regular beat, and you know even just practicing one bar and a change, one chord and harmony change at a time, so it gives you time to get used to soloing on that key. D F G on your D minor seven. So again, we don't have a metronome on, but if you can imagine that that click and we just use the third get that going for that first bar and learning to improvise on that doing uh, a lot of us get caught up with just trying to make pitch melodies and being as busy as we can but you know I, I highly recommend milking one pitch at a time before you end up using the whole three all at once so we could we could first start let's let's leave pitch melody to the end because it's the most common thing we're drawn towards um, and you can only get so far three pitches anyway so you could isolate rhythm. How interesting can we make rhythm on the on the D minor? So utilizing things like space and busyness. You can you can make make things interesting. Like we could start it off more spatially. As you develop the solo one, either with lots of rest or long notes. You can start to almost like make a question and answer out of the rhythm. So you might go. It's a bit, a bit longer, so it gives a sort of a, sort of a restful end. And you ask, 
a different question. Um, so yeah, that's messing with rhythm. We could we could mess things with uh, say dynamics here. So again, just using one pitch. Let's play with the, the dynamics. See what I can do here. We can we can use let's bring in another pitch to utilize some of this so you look at articulation articulation what is that some people say it is uh, using legato's mixture of slurs and staccatos are the, the most commonly ones and how you play with that I might bring in another pitch now to make so I can utilize that more and I might play with octaves too so when you bring in the F out of that three note selection and I might also play with with an octave range here use different D's and S from different octaves. But the focus here is on articulation more than anything. Let's see what I can do here. on uh, slurs and, and staccatos in ways you can use that. And I guess the other thing you could focus on is, uh, let's see, texture. The texture is how many layers I can use. And with two notes, you can be fairly limited. Um, so I might play, you know, I'm using one note at a time or two notes at a time. Because I'm using the octaves, I can also use three notes at a time. D, F and D. Up, or I can use F, D and F. Texture is how thin or thick uh, with the voices, and often you might use the other hand to do this as well to make things sound thicker, or, thicker or sparser. But um, I'll play with just the, the right hand here. And again, I might start thin and then head towards more of a thicker sort of sound, denser sound. on range so sometimes you can build a solo by exploring the range limiting the range and expanding it out as the the solo progresses or reaches a climax so let's do that I'll, I'll do a simple one. I'm gonna go from low to high so that the solo starts lower and ends up at a higher range of the, the pitch we've got three now D, F, and G, so I'll make things more more interesting here play with range by sort of moving out I might I might move I might start sort of midway to play with the lower and, and play with the higher so I might start something like Out with 
some there's some main things you can you can think about with your soloing. Of, of course, as you go through, uh, you could there's other things you do like learn to sing as you're playing your solo, uh, and that can help give you direction and shape to what you're doing. Things like. singer but when I try to do that it gives gives my lines a lot more purpose also gives some breathing space rather than just going play, 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 fill up all the space like a madman you can um, every time you have to breathe it forces you to take a little rest so you get these nice lyrical shapes and phrases happening um, what else well as we go yeah anyway as we go through through this piece it has this kind of this middle well you could then apply the soloing some more, but I was just on the first bar there, but of course there's more, there's the C major. And of course, the typical thing, sort of halfway through or the three quarters of the way through, you can make a climax or even to the very end. So whatever you're doing and playing with those components, um, you can start to go into sort of more of an automatic mode when you get good at it. Uh, so anyway, there's some there's some things about Perdido and some soloing aspects to what I'd, I'd, I'd recommend looking at exploring. And yeah, catch you next time.